there has been more and more pressure by Republican lawmakers toward Donald Trump in order to preemptively, prematurely, however you want to call it, open the country back up, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic with a virus that we still do not have wide testing, widespread testing available for. And so one of the interviews that has caught many people's attention has to do with a GOP lawmaker out of the state of Indiana. He's Representative Trey Hollingsworth. And he believes that it's imperative, incredibly important to open the economy back, back up immediately. And the way that he made his argument was not delicate to say the least, and huh. certainly not humane to say the least. But without further ado, let's hear what he has to say. The decision that needs to be made is to get Americans back to work, back to their jobs, back to their businesses, back to school, back to churches. That's the decision that needs to be made. We have to recognize that no amount of money out of Washington, D.C., no amount of effort out of Washington, D.C. is going to solve this problem like Americans can solve this problem. That's the strength of this country. We've got to understand that and get Americans back to work, back to their businesses, back to school and back to churches. That's where they want to be when I talk to them every single day. There is no zero harm choice here. Both of these decisions will lead to harm for individuals, whether that's dramatic economic harm or whether that's the loss of life. But it is always the American government's position to say in the choice between the loss of our way of life as Americans and the loss of life of American lives, we have to always choose the latter. It is policymakers' decision to put on our big boy and big girl pants and say, this is the lesser of these two evils, and it is not zero evil, but it is the lesser of these evils, and we intend to move forward that direction. That is our responsibility, and to abdicate that is to insult the Americans that voted us into office. So, John, I feel as though the candid nature of some of the responses coming from Republicans really does give us um, reinforcement for what we've been arguing for a long time when it comes to a number of issues, including, by the way, climate change, right? Mm -hmm. So we think that human lives are worth saving, even if it means that we need to sacrifice our way of life, whether it be temporarily or even permanently in the case of climate change. For uh, Trey Hollingsworth, his lifestyle, mm -hmm. his, his nice capitalist American lifestyle, you know, is way more important than yeah. saving as many lives as humanly possible. He thinks that it's the lesser of two, evil to, uh, two evils to sacrifice human lives in order to maintain, um, you know, the economy, businesses, and his lifestyle. Yeah, this uh, it's not the lesser of two evils. There is one evil, and it's uh, him telling other people to go die for his stock portfolio. That's literally the only evil. Um, what you saw there was profoundly corrupt, profoundly cowardly. Uh, he started off with a very Pete Buttigieg-esque sort of mishmash of words that don't really mean anything about this is this is for America to fix. Um, yeah, technically, the doctors to come up with a vaccine. Outside of that, no, it is not on regular workers to get out there to fix a pandemic. Uh, they're supposed to be protected during a pandemic in the same way that we would expect people to put on their big boy pants and protect them if, a, if another country's army was storming our borders. In the same way, I don't want you to die from a bullet from a foreign soldier. I don't want you to die from a disease either. Um, and for him to say there that uh, it's like cowardly to keep the economy shut down, that we should put our big boy pants on is, is, is really awesome to hear. Uh, I'm sure he'll be the first there. You know, um, uh, people at like uh, supermarkets have been dying in, in mass numbers recently, transit workers. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that. So uh, put on your damn big boy pants, Trey Hollingsworth, and uh, go bag some groceries, okay? If you believe that it's American like stick to that's gonna get us through this, then go out there and expose yourself to the coronavirus as so many American workers are already having to do right now. Exactly. And when it comes to the people who are fighting this virus on the front lines, uh, the CDC just reported that more than 9,000 healthcare workers have tested positive uh, for the virus, have contracted the virus. But keep in mind that that is uh, an underestimate. So the numbers are actually likely much higher than that. And so we're not only risking the lives of uh, people who don't take this virus seriously in the first place, when this type of talking point or misinformation gets out there, we're also risking the lives of people who are sacrificing so much just to be on the front lines to keep people alive, right? Mm -hmm. um, the lack of 
you know, concern for average Americans is incredible to me. And and how candid some of these lawmakers are is just really disturbing. Um, Political reported today that while some Republicans are still expressing caution and emphasizing that restrictions need to be lifted gradually. um, Now, Greg Abbott, for instance, is an example of that. He believes in a gradual, um, you know, Uh, lifting of some of these restrictions. Others, though, are being more aggressive and calling for an off-ramp. For instance, uh, Representative Andy Biggs from Arizona said it should have happened yesterday, meaning we should have already opened the economy back up, even though, again, we do not have widespread testing available. It's incredibly difficult for most people to get tested. Even in Los Angeles, where um, testing is more available compared to other parts of the country, you have to show symptoms of the virus in order to qualify for the tests. The reason why this is an issue is because there are asymptomatic people carrying this virus, and it's actually, based on some of the studies that have come out recently, more easily, it's easier to spread the virus when you're in the early stages or when you're asymptomatic. And so like, we're still learning quite a bit about this virus. We still don't have the proper infrastructure in place in order to uh, appropriately respond to increasing numbers of people who contract this virus. And it's so unbelievably irresponsible and disgusting to hear lawmakers publicly make these statements and simultaneously pressure Donald Trump to open the economy back up. Yeah. But the the positive update is that uh, Donald Trump had an hour long meeting with business leaders. And usually you don't start that off with, we have a positive update. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. he met with um, CEOs and business leaders from the banking industry, um, food, hospitality, retail. And to my surprise, these business leaders told him, we cannot open the economy back up until we have widespread testing available. And then after that, Trump was like, oh, we need... We need widespread testing. We need Mm -hmm. to wait until we have that testing available. So luckily, he is listening to those those leaders. And um, luckily, they uh, have some morality when they give Trump this kind of uh, advice and, you know, encourage him to, to hold before opening things back up. Yeah, and and I hope that he's able to maintain that position mentally for uh, maybe 36 hours, maybe 48. Um, he he wanted to open things back up last Sunday, as of about a month ago. Uh, that would have been an absolute disaster. He was cautioned against doing that, backed off from the position. About a week went by, and then he started like saying, "Yeah, we probably need to open things back up." And uh, so, what what would have happened? I mean, we we know the numbers now. Like we've experienced the past week. Andy Biggs said uh, it should have happened yesterday. Um, Andy Biggs, do you know what did happen yesterday? I know what happened yesterday. 2,407 Americans died of coronavirus yesterday, uh, close to double the amount that died the day before. And what's today going to look like? It's going to be higher than that. We're going to set another record for daily deaths, reported deaths, by the way. 2,400 didn't actually die. It's far more than that. But that's the number that we actually have. So I'm going to go with it. And more are going to die today. Hopefully that number will eventually go down. It looked like it was a couple of days ago, and that didn't hold. The number went up, and that's with social distancing. That's with continued quarantines at their highest level that we've had. As soon as you start opening that up, unless you have the testing infrastructure in place, unless you have incredibly lenient sick leave and personal quarantining without losing your job, those sorts of policies, um, those numbers are going to skyrocket. And unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately, it's unfortunate that we have politicians that are pushing for that. It is fortunate that they're being very open about it, that their desire to feed countless thousands of Americans into a wood chipper, if that's what it takes to improve the NASDAQ, they are being very, very obvious about that. And with an election on, hopefully we can use this information and replace some of these absolute ghouls. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. I think that people need to be aware of how little these lawmakers value their lives. And they're supposed to represent you. Keep in mind that the only agreed upon role uh, for the federal government, this is what both Democrats and Republicans are supposed to agree on, right? Is they're supposed to keep the public safe. And uh, as we've seen from Trump's slow response uh, to COVID-19, he failed in doing that. And to see some of these Republican lawmakers goading him into failing even harder 
is just devastating and depressing. One other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, when you look at the number of fatalities, you also have to keep in mind that a lot of these hospitals are already overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. And so some of the other patients who needed uh, medical attention, maybe some surgeries, haven't been able to access our healthcare system and they've been staying home. Some people have died um, from various illnesses because they haven't been able to get the adequate care that they need to survive. So it, while it's not a direct coronavirus death, you also have to think about all the indirect deaths that are happening because of how broken our healthcare system is, how overwhelmed our healthcare system is, and how slow Donald Trump was to respond to this very serious pandemic. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.